Hi, baby. Hi, Popo. You smell like beer. Yes, you do. You look very nice. Yes. I take it this is not your favorite part right here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, you always want to keep your ratio one beer to three okay. eggs. Thing, not the beer egg. Just the, whole <laughs> the dog can do its job. And that coat should be in a state. Oh my gosh, feel the texture on this. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, and it was it was just so like lighter and lacking texture before we did this. Now people often ask, you know, how many how often do you do the beer and eggs? Well, first of all, anytime I'm gonna do a bath bathing process, I will always do the beer and eggs because that's what's gonna really help keep that coat in the shape that it needs to be in. But the other thing is, oh my gosh, that looks fantastic. Um, you want to get your coat looking absolutely phenomenal and you can do the beer and eggs where you can bathe the dog dry it bathe the dog dry it you can do that three to five times in one day and each time you do that that's gonna make the hair even better so it's basically how hard you want to work I wish you guys could feel this texture. It's just absolutely phenomenal. It feels like it has shed out water and yeah. and burrs and grass seeds and you could actually let this dog go out and be a dog now. Now, if I was using full velocity with this, I would definitely be done quicker. But again, I'm working on a show dog. I'm not working on a pet. And when I say pet, you know, they can still be your companion, but this is not a dog. A pet dog is not a dog that's gonna be going into the ring with judges trying to evaluate them to their breed standard, trying to figure out, does this dog have all the parts that it needs to do with the job that it was originally bred to do? And then you go back to beauty contest thing. Well, it's not necessarily a beauty contest. It's more of showing the correctness of genetically what this coat has. And when we put a bunch of bad products on it, you can't feel that because it breaks that down and it alters everything. Isn't that nice? So when you feel the texture that you get from this on your dog, and then you kind of keep in mind what the judges are going to feel when they feel everybody else that's got moose and hairspray and all the junk in the coat, it's like, it's, it's a no-brainer on which way to go. A lot of people follow others with these shortcuts thinking that it's going to save them time in showing their dogs. But the problem that you run into is that it doesn't save you time because then you got to do more work on the back end to get these dogs coats looking perfect and feeling perfect. So do it right the first time and you're gonna see this coat just get, get better and better and better. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is, you know, you look at this as a judge, first thing I'm gonna look at a dog is the top line because the top line is gonna tell me the story of what's going on inside this dog. So I'm gonna take everything from one side and bring it over to the next side. And, and that's going to let me know what my top line is gonna look like. 
uh, what you really want to end up with is a straight line that shoots across here but when we do this you're seeing that we've got some hair that goes way back in there that's going to be a dip and then you got other hair where it comes out further that's going to be a rise and so your top line is going to be really super uneven from the story that you're getting here once i get that then i come in i'll start off with my 13 millimeter and i'll just take the tips of the hairs to try to make this line straight and you don't you still want to work this because you need to keep that density coming in but you're not going to take as much you want to you're really just working some of these longer hairs out because those are the ones that are the problems then i'll take my bore brush and i'll go with the grain and see how, if that's laying any better which that's a little bit better yeah. right there right there yep you can see that and then i'm going to come in a layer lower and so now the hair is coming this direction see here it's going this direction so it's 90 degrees but now that the hair is coming this way 90 degrees is this way so i'm going to take this and bring this over and that's going to expose these longer hairs and again i'll come in with my 13 millimeter i like using the 13 millimeter for what i call roughing in because the weight of the tool actually helps do some of the work. Um, yes, it's heavy, but if I'm using an, the eight millimeter here, then I'm using all muscle, where here, the weight of the tool is helping me bring some of this down. Okay, then I'll come in with my bore, bring this down in the direction that I want it to go. And then I'm going to come down another layer lower. And you're going to find that the lower I go with most of these breeds, the worse it's going to get. Because we're more comfortable grooming here, less comfortable grooming there. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and start to work these. The, the biggest thing that you could do wrong at this stage is try to make it perfect. And the reason for that is because, especially with a breed like this, you need density. You want layers. You want to roll this coat so that you can show this dog year round. And if you try to make it perfect like a poodle or something in, in one grooming session, and I know this dog's going to a show, but you have to bite the bullet somewhere and say, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to let this dog grow out where it needs to grow out. And I'm going to create many layers underneath this. But these are problem hairs. And it's best to get those hairs out by the tips here. Stay. Go. Oh. Stay, laddie. And that's going to make this hair look absolutely gorgeous as it starts to drop. Yeah, it's true. Now, by no means is that where it needs to be. But if you look at this side and look at the other side, you're going to see a difference in how this coat is starting mm -hmm. to lay. Mm -hmm. Now, a little trick on breeds where you need to show depth of chest and length of leg. That what I do Stay. there is I'll Stay. take my comb right where the leg is supposed to be and I pop that out. And see all that hair? Mm -hmm. That hair is going to flip out in the in most inappropriate time when the judge is looking and it's going to hide the beautiful lines of this leg right here. So I want to get rid of all this, but I'm not going to, again, I don't want to do that at one time. And then what happens is as we start to get that down, look at how that leg starts to form right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You can really start to see that Stop. definition of that leg. Oh. So, and Stop. all that takes is putting the comb where that leg is supposed to be, popping that out, and that shows you exactly where your problem hairs are at. And this is something that I would take probably about six months to get this perfect right here. Uh, some people that rush this where they say, oh, I need this dog looking perfect for a show, then I would, then that's when you would come in with thinning shears, but you're mm -hmm. really going to make yourself go backwards when you do that. Mm -hmm. So it's best to bite the bullet and start to see this hair really drop the way it needs to. Okay, now as we start to get down here, I might even come in with the comb and start to expose some of these hairs that need to come out. And again, grab the tips of these hairs because that's where the problems are at. 
people will see a problem here so they want to grab here uh -huh. but when you grab here you make a hole above that mm -hmm. and that's not where the problem is at brush this down this is going to really promote good density nice beautiful good color good texture hair coming in and it's just going to keep getting better and better and better i know thank you very much yes okay now as we start to fine tune a little bit then we'll come in and we're going to look for again some smaller hairs but i'm going to switch to the eight millimeter now the eight millimeter is going to allow me to have a little more precision get rid of some of these problem hairs that are making the coat stand up stay baby but when i'm using my 13 the 13 stay, millimeter is stay. designed for shaping the dog getting it to where it needs to be a little quicker and this is more detail I'd flip flop back and forth because you actually are going to pull some hairs with the 13 that you aren't going to get with the 8 and vice versa. So if you switch back and forth between the two, then you'll end up with an absolutely drop dead gorgeous coat. Now, as I start to work down, I use my comb as a tool and I'll place this right here on the back portion of the dog Stay. and I want this to kind of fill in right here a little bit so I'm looking in here and it's like okay I want to get some of this bulk out and make this a little bit closer to that right there and I want this to create some density to come out here so it doesn't make it it doesn't make the dog look like it's too lean on here one of the things we can do for that to start shaping what we need here is we take this tool and what this tool does is this will find again some certain hairs where you have some of this bulk and really allow this stuff to lay down nice as we're coming into this loin right here See, and i'd want this to get some density just to come out just a little tiny bit right in here not too much but i want this dog to look like a dog and if we get that sucked in too much then that's just a little bit too much there now if i want to start working on blending this stuff in here i'll flip it over to the other side where it's a little more fine and again this is how i'm going to fine tune this coat dropping to the bottom of where these furnishings are at right here but i'm going to stay away from this area because i want this to increase that density and kind of fill this in a little bit right here as it drops into that tuck up okay you can see where this is laying down really nice right here okay look at the other side <laughs> and and you look at you know how much hair did we take off Not hardly much. anything right there but we're really starting to see this outline now you know this is a tough situation because this needs to be gone but for i would prefer doing this the way it needs to be done at the schedule that it needs to be done and get ready getting rid of this stuff um as as it's ready to come out if you force this stuff or you pull this stuff too much then it's going to all come back in at one time it's not going to look good it's not going to look even i know we got a show coming up but i would pretty much bite the bullet and let this work through that right there yeah so you know, we got some time then. okay yeah. so here i'm going to come in and bring everything from the inside over here to the outside here just like this and when i do that i'm going to again take my 13 millimeter and i'm going to pull these longer hairs now a lot of times people freak out at this point because it's like oh I don't want to lose all that stuff that we've been growing but what you can see is not good quality hair that's coming in here and it's actually going to make this seem like it's got a little more bone as we start to clean this up so look at this leg and look at that other leg 
And at least he has decent form. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of these flyaways here. Look at how nice this it's is beautiful. starting to look right yep. there. Yep, now you can see where the upper arms are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to shape all this stuff. Okay. Now, here's another thing where many people tell you to come in here, mm -hmm. find the prosternum, go two fingers or three fingers, and then do your clipper work. Don't do that. And the reason for that is because it creates, it gives the illusion of the prosternum being in the wrong place and also makes your upper arm look shorter and at the wrong angle. The way you want to do this is wherever you divide this dog in half at that center line should be your furthest point sticking out. And if that's there, you're going to get balance in this. And right now you've got, this is kind of like a straight line right here, mm -hmm. maybe sticking out a little bit further here, but look at how short this upper arm looks. And then you got to go to this great distance right here with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to create a center line here and that should be your furthest point sticking out right there. And sometimes when you cut this too, too far down, then it makes it very difficult to put that in the right place because you don't have hair here to that can to bring that over like yeah. that. Now this stuff here needs to grow so we can create that top portion right there. Sure. We want to start shaping this and we have the hair to do it then what we're going to do is we're going to come in like this and we're going to bring all this hair just like a top line mm -hmm. over to the side now we don't need this so we start taking uh -huh. tips of this out of here stay and what's going to happen is you're going to see that's going to start to drop this hair stay so when we comb this A lot of electricity in the air. It's dry. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing too, is as we start to hydrate this, that won't matter. But as when we, we take all that to to one direction like that and start pulling that, then that automatically is gonna start shaping this where this needs to go. And then go what ahead. What do you do under, for the underlines? Because I this really that's don't the next like that's the, that's the uh, next step right here. <laughs> go ahead and get him to sit down. Okay. Oh, sit, buddy. You sit. can sit. You can do that thing you wanted to. Ooh, He's like, what? Want to. Okay. Please sit. <laughs> so, the way you create the perfect underline is you're going to bring all this coat over 90 degrees like this. Okay, and this is the point here where I will use my thinning shears. Can you grab the thinning shears, please? See, these guys are never supposed to have a cocker spaniel look. Right. That's what everybody does right. these days. Right, exactly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this stuff here because this stuff is sticking outside the line of the body right there. Then I'm going to come in here as they're sitting down and I need to find where this leg is right here. So I'm gonna come in from the center line of the dog and just start to clean this up towards where that leg is. You do realize I'm panicking right now. Yeah, right? I know. That's okay. <laughs> I'm trying not to, but... Because I did this once and then I, I totally scared myself and That's okay. done it again. But I've done it more than once, so... Yeah, exactly, so I'm trust. Hold still, buddy. Cool. Okay, so I'm exposing this right here. Yep. Okay, now go ahead and get him to stand up again. And again, we're not completely done yet. But what's going to happen is this is going to show you where this leg comes into here. And, and then, yeah, and then this comes out in towards the center line of the yep. dog. So all this stuff needs to disappear. So you can really see that beautiful line right there. And that's going to raise all this stuff up. Right now, he has hair here for no purpose. And so the judges have to really work to see the line of that dog. So let's have him sit down again. Sit, son. Sit. Sit. 
Sit, Paul. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Sit, Paul. Sit, Sit, Paul. Sit, buddy. Good man. Sit. Good, Good boy. boy. There you go. So see this stuff here? I'm going to get rid of that. I'm coming in towards the center line of my dog right here. All right. A little bit of time. Yeah, a little bit of time. That's yep. Until we have him perfect. Until you have him perfect. I know. I'm still breathing though. We're doing good there. Your breathing's good. <laughs> I mean, I trust Eric, but I'm like, oh my. Okay. God. Now when he stands up. Wow. Yep. Yep. Now he's see, I can see that. Yep. Now you can see that yep. without having to go up here and take exactly. it all out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So then, as that starts to grow in. It's then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to take this stuff at a 90 degree angle, just like this, and I'm going to switch over from using thinning shears to start to build in towards the center line of my dog here. Yeah, oh, I know. That's what I... That's my... Yeah. Say 90 degrees. Like you said. Take these longer hairs. Perfect. This show fine. It's going to be better. It will be better. Now, each yeah. time will get better and better. And then we just keep doing it. And by the time we have very special him, he'll be perfect. He'll be perfect. Now, the other thing here is this is going to be incorrect in the beginning. It's going to be more of a line like this, mm -hmm. but you don't have the density in here to create what you need. It's, you know, this is more of a line here, which is not going to be correct or nor is going to be, you know, what you want. But if, as we start pulling this hair here, we're going to create layers. And this is going to start to get to the point where this hair here Stay. will work its way into where that prosternum is. Yes. And just grab the tips of these hairs. Show